Hi guys, today I'm setting up an Ubuntu server to be an NFS server. And NFS, if you don't know, stands for Network File System. It's an easy way of sharing out local files and file systems to another remote Linux system. So today I'm going to show you how to export your files and then mount it remotely and define it correctly in your ETC FS tab file. Then after that I'm going to show you how to make sure that you are monitoring that your NFS mounts are correctly mounted and defined in your ETC FS tab file and that they're there when you need it because NFS mounts and exports can be used for web content, home directories, uh, MySQL databases, so things that your end users will actually need and make sure that they need services up and running and properly access the files they need for those services. So I'm going to also show you how to set up the Nagio system to monitor those to make sure that your NFS mounts are correctly being mounted and exported to your systems for the services that are needing them. So just keep watching and I'll show you how easy it is to get started. The first thing you want to do is go ahead and install the server packages. So we're going to do the sudo and then we use the packet manager in Ubuntu. D package, D-P-K-E. If you do minus L, it'll give you a listing of all the packages currently installed. You go ahead and grep for NFS to see if you already have the NFS server packages installed. Um, if it's a fresh install, you might not have that, so it's kind of... So what you're going to want to do is go ahead and install the NFS server package. So we're going to use app get install, and then it's going to be called NFS kernel server. So this is going to hit install the services we need. Uh, to run our NFS server. So it's a really small install, only about 18 megs. So you can click on yes, it's going to go ahead and get it and download it. And once it's installed, which should just take a few minutes here, once it's installed, we're going to be able to configure Ubuntu to be our NFS server. So this is Ubuntu server I'm running here. Um, you could do this on Ubuntu desktop as well. It's not restricted only to Ubuntu server. Um, but so we're going to go ahead and unpackage the package manager installing all the prerequisites that we need, all the dependencies. It's going to go ahead and create our export files, etc exports, which is an important file which we're going to go ahead and configure in a moment. So once we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at and configure our etc exports. Um, we first have to can make a directory to export. So in the if the, we had a fictional web server. Let's call it, you know, web server one. And on this web server, we have uh, files we want to uh, host for our website. But we want to host it off our uh, file server and export the content to our web server. So let's say this Ubuntu server is our file server. So we're going to create an export www. And let's say the slash export is a huge file system. So it's maybe multiple hundreds of gigs. You have a huge website. You want to host it over NFS to our web server or web servers, right, plural, so you might have a cluster of web servers. You could export them all to all your web servers from your file server. So let's say we have our website hosted, right, export www. We're going to put all our content in there, and we're going to share it out to our other Linux or Unix system on our network running Apache or Nginx. So once we've done that, we created our folder, put our content in it, we want to go ahead and share it. This is where we're going to start using our etc export file to define where we want to export it to and who we want to share it out to. The first line of our etc exports file is the path you want to export. There's some examples here you can take a look at. So we want to export the path, the file system path, export slash www. Then we're going to give it a network um, address or subnet. So it could be an individual host, it could be a subnet. So in this case, I'm saying sharing it out to a subnet that can mount this file system. I'm giving rewrite access, FSID 0, insecure, and then no subtrees check. So depending on what you want to do, if you want to mount a read-only file system, you want to mount a write file system, if you want to record your access times, if you want to allow root level access, there's many options to um, export your file system. And depending if you need to read or you need to write or if you want to improve a performance, you might select different options. So you want to definitely look at the man pages for uh, exports. ETC exports file and look at all the options. So this is the option I'm selecting insecure. So it's just a faster writable file system. But again, 
you definitely want to take a look at these options to make sure you have the right one for you. Maybe you don't want to share it out to a subnet. Maybe you don't want to have it read only. Maybe you want to allow uh, remote uh, root access. So depending on what you want on this file system, definitely look at the settings before you configure this. So that's when you read the man pages. Um, I went ahead and changed my subnet to make sure I had it correct there. I had a small typo. So I'm going to go ahead and correct my subnet. And once you're done with this, you want to make sure your NFS server is actually running. So you want to make sure it's running and that your file systems are exported. So let's go ahead and first start up our NFS server. We're going to do sudo because the sudo ha it has to run as root to start up a service in Ubuntu. So we're going to type in service, the service name, NFS kernel server. And then you could type in restart to restart the service, start or status to get information about the service. So I'm going to go ahead and restart it. The next useful command to know is the export fs command, which also has to run as root. So we see to export fs, and there's a few different arguments. It's good to look at the man pages for this command, but minus a will export everything in the etc um, exports file. So if you went ahead and modified anything in there, you can go ahead and do an export fs to push out that you're now exporting and sharing out that file system. So if you do an export FS by itself, it just lists the current file systems being shared out. So you notice it has the old one there and a new one. Export FS can also be used to stop sharing out file systems. So the old one there can be removed with export FS. Again, take a look at the man pages. Export FS is a great command to know. Once the server side has been configured, let's go ahead and look at the client side. So this is the machine we're going to be mounting the shared file system to. So we can issue the mount command with the IP address of the NFS server and the exported file system, and then the file system we want to mount to. So those are the arguments you need. You need to know the server name, the folder being shared out, and slash and the host file system directory you want to mount it to. Again, here you can use also use the NFS export FS command to actually browse NFS servers to see what's being offered by those NFS servers, what file systems are being shared out. So if you need more information, if you don't know the file system being shared out, you can use the export FS again and point it to the NFS server to collect that information. Now, if you want to make sure that the file system is being mounted at boot every time the machine is restarted, then you want to add it to the etcfs tab file. So that's file system table. So this is the file that's being browsed or accessed during boot to determine what file system needs to be mounted, including slash, um, swap, if you have any other slash op, slash temp, if you have any other file system that's on its own partition or volume that you're going to want to define, then it gets defined in here when you're actually installing your OS. But in addition to that, you want to add any NFS mounts. So kind of the same arguments you use in your export or in your mount command you can do here. You can put in your server name. You're going to put in the path that you're accessing your mount, your mount point slash www. Your type, it's an NFS and auto is the autofill. Zero and zero determines if the system needs to be scanned at boot to determine if it and if it could be mounted at boot or the system can continue booting if it the mount fails. A quick test of the NFS tag can be done if you simply unmount slash www unmount your file system and then type in mount and then mount minus A. So if you do a mount command, you see that the NFS mount is mounted at slash www, so our mount point. If we do an unmount slash www, it's going to unmount that mount file system, mounted file system. Now, if we do a mount minus A, it's going to go through the etcfs tab file and remount that file system if it has been configured correctly in your etcfs tab file. And you should make sure that file is configured correctly. It could be cause issues during boot time if it has not been configured correctly. Now, if you have a services dependent on that mount point, I highly recommend that you monitor that it's mounted correctly at all times, such as web content. If you have your web servers 
needing that data, the website data, you want to make sure it's going to be monitored. So using Nagios is a good way of monitoring that. So if you go to Nagios, exchange.nagios.org, we're going to use the plugin check mount points.sh. It's a shell script uh, written to go ahead and check your FSTAB file and your mount point is being mounted correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and download that. I'm going to make the file executable with our change mod command. And we're going to go ahead and copy that script into our Nagios plugin um, folder. If you need help configuring your client for to be monitored by Nagios, I'm going to put a link here to another video that shows how to set up your uh, Linux client and using the Nagios remote um, remote plugin executor. So I'm going to go ahead and copy my mount point to the plugins folder of my Linux client. So I already have um, services being monitored on this system. So definitely check out my other video. So I'm going to go into my file. I'm going to go and modify my rnrpe.com file. I want to make sure my host allow is correct. So this is the server IP address. So this is the host that is allowed to collect information from this client. I'm going to add a command. So I'm adding the check mount point command. I'm pointing it to the shell script we just downloaded from the Nagios exchange. So user lib64 Nagios plugin check mounts. And we're, I'm giving it an argument. If you run the script on the command line, which is a good way of debugging it, making sure your codes were uh, the script's working correctly, uh, it's a good way of finding out how to um, define your command here. So check mount points, and then the mount point I want checked is slash www. Um, of course, you can change that to whatever mount point you need. Now, if we go back to our Nagio server, we're going to run it on the command line. So I'm doing check. Nagios remote proceed plugin executor. I'm giving it the IP address of our Linux client minus H in the IP address and then the command I want to run and that's the command we defined in the nrpe.com file on our Linux system. It's the one that's saying how uh, the command is going to run. So it's that mount check mount points slash www command that we just defined. If everything's working correctly, you should get a result back saying OK and that the mount point is correctly mounted. Once we know it works correctly on the command line, let's go ahead and define it on our Nagio server so it appears on the web interface and it is regularly monitored. So we're going to go into our objects folder. We're going to go into our commands file, .conf. We're going to define a new command. So we're going to do the command we're going to define is using the Nagios remote plugin executor. So let's go ahead and do the command we define command, open bracket, and then close bracket. We're going to use the argument command underscore name. And let's go ahead and call it check nrpe. But we're now we're going to go command line. We're going to do user1, which is just the path to where our plugins are at nrpe check i'm sorry underscore nrpe so this this script should be there it's going to remotely execute a command for us we're going to give it the host for our uh, linux client but instead of using linux client we're using a variable host address and then we're going to do a minus c which will take an argument and the argument will be the command that is defined in the nrpe comp file on our remote system on our linux client so when we went and define our check mount point command in the nrpe comp file that is what we're going to be calling that minus c now on our nagio server let's go into our linux configuration file we're going to define a new service to be monitored so the service is going to use the command we just defined on our Nagios server that will call the NRP, the remote um, Nagios remote plugin executor on our client and issue the command that we defined on there. So once you do it a few times, it actually makes perfect sense. So let's go ahead and you define service, use local service, host name, it's going to be our local Nagios client. Um, service description so this is how it's going to appear on the website so i'm just calling it mount point and then command 
So this is where we're going to call our check NRPE, and it's going to take the argument check mount points. Again, this is the name that we defined on the client in the nrp.com file. So that's where the minus C, and this is the argument for the minus C. And then we go ahead and enable notifications, any sort of paging, and we're going to contact any admins listed in the Linux admin group. All right, now this is good. Now everything worked correctly, and we do a service now use restart, and our configuration files are correct. This will come back without any error messages, which it did. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our web interface, make sure everything's working correctly. We click on host, we click on Linux client. Let's check out our details. Our mount point service is pending. It's so waiting for our first check. Just give it a few moments and it'll come back and it will have checked to make sure our mount point, the slash www is in fact correctly mounted. Now, if you want to make sure that it will check if the mount fails, you go ahead and simulate that by unmounting it. Within a few moments, you should see that the web interface is now saying that the service is critical, that slash www is not mounted. If anything happens to the etc fs tab file, that error message will appear uh, saying the fs tab file is incorrect as well. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you liked the video. Be sure you set up your NFS server. Super easy to do, and make sure you're monitoring your systems at all times. I'll see you guys next time, and subscribe to get updates. Bye.